21st Century Entrepreneurship with Martin Piskarik. What are some of the key challenges that companies face when it comes to increased cyber risks in work from home environments? So I think as a result of COVID um, epidemic, a lot of workers moved to their home office. Um, And as a matter of fact, about 60% of companies who moved their um, workers to home office, when they asked them to come back, uh, most of them would rather quit the job and start working for some other remote company than, than, than actually moving back to the office. And with that, they also moved their devices outside of their company network. And so entrepreneurs are now forced to make sure that these devices, uh, that they have no control over, they are connecting from unsecured networks and very often our personal devices of these workers are still secure enough so that they don't um, introduce some malware or potential security issue into the network that is now actually spread across the public internet and no longer just a local network. What are some of the latest trends in enterprise IT networking and cybersecurity and does it all this also negatively impact uh, small businesses? Right. So um, as for the cybersecurity landscape, when we're talking about attacks, not much has changed. I mean, the techniques used by attackers are so efficient today because they rely so much on human error, on gaps left by traditional protection means. Um, so what we see is one thing, the rise of attacks. We see that SMBs are and entrepreneurs and and smaller companies and freelancers are much more targeted than before actually they make up to uh, you know 50% of all attacks today and the ways of protection uh, are shifting quite tremendously it's no longer about finding the new visionary technology it's about being uh, capable of introducing the traditional means to the public remote work. And some of these techniques, and one most important one of them, uh, I would say all uh, of them all, is zero trust network access. The concept has been around for quite a while, um, but it's never been seen as so important by, by, by many companies. And the whole concept of zero trust, we can think of it um, in analogy with physical security. Buildings used to have a security guard, a doorman who would allow only known and trusted people inside. And once they got into the building, they had pretty much unlimited access to any door of his apartment. Uh, But doorman could be tricked, could have been tricked. Um, And so uh, houses started introducing surveillance, camera systems, 24-7 desks, access cards. And zero trust network access is pretty much the same. You do not allow everyone to have access everywhere, only to places where they need it only necessarily, which means if they are compromised and their account is credentials are stolen, they wouldn't cause so much harm. So zero trust is one of those concepts that more than ever is like not really new, but being Im- implemented in, in, in remote work. And why uh, do you believe that zero trust uh, access control is more secure alternative to VPN for remote working security? Zero trust as a concept is actually not more secure, even though it it often comes hand in hand with multi-layer authentication so you can use biometry you can uh, use much better identification of a person um, but the concept itself is not 
more secure in terms of protecting from someone to get in it is more secure by limiting and narrowing the br data breach risk so the consequences are less harmful and there's less financial and reputation uh, impact how does good access help businesses uh, keep their data safe and and secure and and can startups or small uh, entrepreneurs afford professional that kind of professional help we look at our purpose in the world as helping anyone who wants to protect themselves to be able to do that regardless how many it resources um budgets and people they have at their hand And so we've built a solution that's consumer level simple, but comes with enterprise level or great feature set. And so the deployment takes about 10 minutes. And what you get after that is having every device connecting to your resources wherever they are located all that communication is encrypted falls under strict regulations on who can access it how and when um and all of these systems people and resources are kind of covered and cloaked and protected from the outside world and they kind of live in vir virtual island uh, across the public uh, internet. So um, simply said, we uh, provide cloud-based uh, secure remote access based on zero trust principles. Um, and the companies who use it come from, you know, start from freelancers and people like us, uh, all the way to um, enterprises with uh, up to thousand uh, employees usually. How has uh, the company good access been able to grow in such a competitive uh, marketplace and what's what's your business model um so we provide subscription uh, based product delivered from from the cloud you consume it like you would your gmail or um, monday or asana um and uh we were so successful because um there's so much hunger for remote access protection, but traditional technologies are too complex. We actually had a study with Enterprise Management Associates recently, and as an output, we have a white paper that, that showed us that while uh, two out of three companies surveyed in this, um, in this study believe that zero trust is the answer to this uh, remote security risks, one third of those people uh, were not willing to invest in it because they feared complexity. Another third feared the related costs. And the last third feared that they didn't have sufficient expertise to manage that um, platform. But as I mentioned, the simplicity means we are the experts and provide all the um, all the functions and intelligence inbuilt, and you just consume it as you would any other SaaS service, and that uh, enabled us to quadruple the company over the last two years, actually. Can you tell us? A little bit about your own background in IT networking and and cybersecurity. Right. Um, so my background is cybersecurity. I've been in IT and cybersecurity for over a decade now, um, starting uh, on technical positions and then moving more to sales. I wasn't I wasn't always um, satisfied with the services we were supposed to deliver uh, based on 
the um, uh, the promises that we deliver as as sales, and and so I wanted to you know touch the different different world as well, and through sales. Um, I got to education and education is my passion. Uh, back then, not many companies thought of cybersecurity as a core uh, thing they should they should be doing and they thought of it as something that you know read that they read about in newspapers and and so um educating and evangelizing them on how security can be um can is important and how it can be useful uh got me to more of product marketing and then later marketing roles but in my heart i'm still the engineer and educator and and i really love that from the marketing perspective i would definitely in this competitive environment say there are two things every entrepreneur and company should focus one is utilizing the new digital ways and means to find new um sources of of revenue and business models we're talking about web3 and and metaverse and 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 whatnot and and then second thing would be look for social uh social trust it's not always about google and ppc campaigns it's it's not about um it's not about necessarily what you tell the world it is very much about what the world thinks of you and nurturing and working with communities social proof reviews can give you this credit credibility trustworthiness um and also visibility and awareness and in terms of cybersecurity um i strongly suggest everyone to stop procrastinating cybersecurity isn't that hard there are simple rules to follow there are, there's tons of tools that are simple enough for you know any um freelancer and a ceo of a small company and a cto without without much of a knowledge of new technologies and tools to deploy almost instantly and do the heavy lifting of cyber security and cover from you know 80 percent of, of of potential problems with you know so much less effort than they usually think I would say that even our credibility that you were talking about is higher if we are using a product like yours in our daily business routine. It's right, Martin. Thank you for pointing that out. If you are working within supply chain, delivering to customers, um, uh, if you're consulting, most of this work today is done through um digital channels and so showing this extra layer of security um while not obscuring the practicality of the whole process will definitely make you more competitive to to some of your um to some of your uh, competitors um because the trust in exchanging data exchanging information about customers even you know when you follow gdpr rules that can still happen when you're in some sort of supply chain um is one of the main criteria advanced lean forward thinking modern companies evaluate you as a potential supplier think about education as pre-sales activity we have two groups of customers those that are educated they know what they're looking for they just they just look for the best solution for their needs and then we have the other part um uh, companies who contem uh, entrepreneurs and companies and freelancers who they know they should be doing something, but don't know how to go about it. Um, and so a lot of our first touch um, communication with that group of customers is helping them to figure out, you know, how to think of security as a project, as a new competency in their work. And and that's super crucial. You know, I think interesting, interesting idea 10 years ago when we talked about what to do first when you want to do cybersecurity in your uh, in your company was educate users um educating users seems to have failed because no matter how much we educate them and how many certifi certificates we as a company gain in cybersecurity there will always be these goofy users who under time pressure you know pressure to deliver make silly mistakes or just willingly you know 
bypass some you know uh, step uh, and so the education is now left for stakeholders so stakeholders do those things that even if your users who were uneducated or educated did something willingly will minimize the risk of the consequence of their actions so education is important we're just moving the focus on different people i would say within the company If you are ready to jump into doing the cybersecurity the right modern way in this hyper-connected world, especially when you have remote uh, users working from home and different places, visit our website, goodaccess.com, and make sure to subscribe to our free plan, which is unlimited forever for up to 100 users. And we're happy to jump on a call with you and do some consultancy and trying to figure out how we can fit into your uh, IT environment and how you can start building your cybersecurity today. 21st Century Entrepreneurship with Martin Piskorik.